The basic, major and minor chord inversion positions are something that all piano players like yourself need to work towards learning fluently to the point where they're just in your fingers and you can find them without hesitation. But getting to that point can seem like a lot. All the shapes are confusing and with that many chords, it can feel overwhelming. So I wanna share with you a simple system, a tried and tested method that I use with students to help make this achievable for everyone. Here's the system. It consists of three steps. It's very practical. It's a mix of visual learning with some key bits of basic music theory to help us. First of all, we're gonna essentially halve the amount of chords that you need to memorize because we're gonna learn how to switch any chord inversion position between major and minor. That way, if you learn one, you can find the other one. The second thing that's gonna help us find these chords more easily is paying close attention to the shape of a root position versus a first and second inversion. And the last thing is really important to help make this whole thing more manageable and avoid that common issue of getting all the different chords mixed up. We're going to organize the different chords into four groups. All the chords inside each group are gonna be easier to learn together because they look alike. And then throughout the video, we're gonna focus on one group at a time. And by the way, I've written out each group for you in the pinned comment below so you can copy that because over a period of time, you're gonna to wanna to go away and practice one group at a time, moving on to the next group once you've got the previous group nailed. The first group is the simplest place to start, and that's with the chords that only use white keys. In this group, we're gonna look at C, F, and G major, as well as D, E, and A minor. This is a C major chord, and we call this root position. This is a C major in first inversion. All I've done is taken the root position and I've moved the C to the top. I've just rearranged the order of the three notes within the chord. So it's still the same chord and we can do that kind of thing with any chord. And now if I move the E to the E above, then here is a C major in second inversion. It's just another way to arrange the three notes. We use these three positions all the time playing piano and the main way people usually practice them to begin with is by running them up and down like this for every chord, which is a great starting point and I still want you to do that. But the issue you can still run in with is not being able to find one of the inversion positions straight away without running through the order to get there because that's how you've gotten used to finding them. But practically speaking, when we're actually playing music, that's no good. We have to be able to find the one we need straight away. Let me know in the comments below, what does your chord practice look like? Is there anything that you're working on at the moment or are there any chords that you particularly find difficult? Root positions are really an even looking shape. So it's the same spacing from here to here as it is from here to here. We actually call this spacing a third. So it's one, two, three white keys. And then from here to here is also three white keys. One, two, three. If we look at F major, it's the same. One, two, three, one, two, three. And so is D minor. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if we look at that first inversion of C major again, this is uneven to look at. We have a third here still, but we have a larger gap here of a fourth. One, two, three, four. So the most important thing to help you find these positions more easily and straight away is to think about how the shape of it looks as well as where the root is in each one. In our root position chord, the root C, C is the root of a C chord, it's on the bottom, and in first inversion, we moved it to the top. So first inversions, the root is at the top. Think about what you already do when you find a root position. Let's say you're finding E minor. First, you spot the root on the piano, the E, and then you play the chord from there. So I like to call this the bottom up shape. You find the root and then you build the rest of the chord above it. We just need to apply the same thought to other positions. 
So our C major first inversion we said has the root at the top. So let's call this the top down shape because you would locate the root. To find this chord straight away, you'd locate the root and remember the rest of the shape is underneath. So you're going from the top down. So an F major first inversion would be this. F at the top, and then I've made that same shape underneath. I've still got a fourth here and a third here. Or an E minor chord. I've located the E on the top, and then I've built the shape underneath. I've still got a fourth here and a third here. All the first inversions in this group look like the same shape as each other on the keyboard too. So moving on to a second inversion, this shape is the other way around. So here's our C major second inversion position again. This one has the bigger gap of a fourth here instead and the third is above. It's the opposite way round to a first inversion shape. And now the root, C, is in the middle. So let's call this one the middle around position. If you were to find this chord straight away, you'd locate the root, C, and then you'd create that shape around the C. Build the rest of the shape around the C. For F major, you'd find the F, and then you'd build the shape around it. See, it's the same shape as the C was. The fourth is on the bottom. The fourth is still on the bottom, and the third is on top. And with an E minor, you'd find the E, and you'd build that same shape around the E. All the second inversion chords look like the same shape as each other as well. The first thing to practice is all the chords in this group. These are some simple but fundamental ways you should practice and you can use these methods for all the groups in the video. Running the positions up and down like I showed you earlier is a good starting point. Then you want to practice for a more real life situation by finding the first inversions and second inversions in each group straight away. You can play through all the chords in each group and it's helpful if you can get someone to test you by calling out random chords to find or you could write out a random sequence to follow. When this feels easy, you can then try mixing multiple groups together. We can come up with more creative and musical things too. I have some really cool, helpful exercises I wanna show you in the future, but I suggest just starting here with the basics. And the other thing is changing each chord back and forth between major and minor, which we're gonna look at next. And I wanna point out that these shapes are gonna help us learn to read chords as well, but I will do a separate video focused on that. That's the first group, and now all those chords we've learned are gonna help us find all the chords in the second group by switching them between major and minor. So now we're gonna find C, F, and G minor, as well as D, E, and A major. But there's one more really important thing we need to do first. We need to label each note in all these chords. Altogether, each chord needs a root, a third, and a fifth. Just quickly though, if this video has been helpful for you so far, then please give it a thumbs up because that really does help. In a C major chord, C is the root, and in root position, it's on the bottom. That makes the E the third, because it's three letters away from the C. C, D, E. You see it's three white keys along as well. One, two, three. It's also three notes through the C major scale. One, two, three. And then we call the G the fifth because it's five letters from the root. That's how it works. It's five away from the starting point, the root. One, two, three, four, five, or C, D, E, F, G. So however we spread those notes around now, let's say I'm playing a first inversion, we're still going to call C the root wherever it is. We're still going to call E the third wherever it is. And we're still going to call G the fifth wherever it is. And that works the same for all these chords. If I'm playing a D minor chord, I'm going to call D the root. I'm going to call F the third. And I'm going to call A the fifth. The root, third and fifth are what we call intervals. Now we can turn any of these root position major chords into minor chords 
simply by lowering the middle note by one semitone or one half step. That means the same thing. If we take a C major chord and we lower the E, a half step to E flat, it becomes C minor. Lowering the A in an F major chord to A flat creates an F minor chord and lowering the B in a G major chord to B flat gives us a G minor chord. The note we lowered each time is the third in the chord. More specifically though, in a major chord, we actually call this a major third, and when we lower it by a half step, in a minor chord, we call that the minor third. The major third was four half steps from the root. So starting here, I go one, two, three, four half steps. And then the minor third is only three half steps, it's smaller. So from the root, one, two, three. I've moved three half steps up. But we need to do this when we're using inversion positions. The only difference is that the third is no longer the middle note like it was in root position. In a first inversion, it's now on the bottom. The root is on the top now, loops around, and the third is on the bottom. So this goes from major to minor like this. C major, C minor. I'm still just moving the E to the E flat. The third has gone down a half step. The only thing that's changed is where the C is. You still, E is going down to E flat in root position, and E is still going down to E flat in first inversion. So the trick is to know where the third is. This is F major in first inversion. So the third is A this time, the third's on the bottom, remember? So that's the one we move down. A down to A flat. So that's F major first inversion. That's F minor first inversion. So it makes sense now how if you already have one memorized, you can easily see the other one if you know how to change it. If I can find G major first inversion confidently, then I can also find G minor by lowering the third. And as you would have noticed, those three chords all look similar because they each had a black key on the bottom. So what does that look like with second inversions? Well, let's go back to our C major second inversion. We already know the root C was in the middle. That means the third is on top because it goes root, third, the fifth would be there, but it's underneath now. And it's still just E to E flat. I need to change the major third moving to the minor third. It's just that the notes are in a different order now, so that third, the E, is on top this time. For F major, that would be the A on top, moving down to A flat. That gives us F minor. And for G, that would be the B on top, moving down to B flat. By the way, I've also written finger suggestions in the pinned comment too, and if you're struggling to actually play any of these chords, it might be a technical issue. I do have a video on hand positioning, which you'll probably find quite useful. I'll link that in the description. So a good way to practice, as well as jumping through the inversions of, let's say, C minor, which is good to try first, you can also practice changing the inversions back and forth. So root position, major, minor, First inversion, major, minor. Second inversion, major and minor. And you can try that with all the chords. So you only have to memorize one pattern, but it works for all 12 chords. And if you've already learned a minor chord, you do the same thing, think about where the third is, but this time you just raise it and that gives you a major chord. If we wanna change this E minor to E major, we raise the middle note G, the third, we raise it by a half step to G sharp. G was the minor third from E, it's three half steps away, one, two, three. And G sharp is a major third, four half steps away, one, two, three, four. So from a first inversion of E minor, we still need to move the note G, it's just on the bottom now. It was in the middle, but now it's on the bottom. So we raise that up to G sharp, 
and that gives us our E major chord. E minor, E major. And in second inversion, remember the third is on top, so we raise the top note from the minor third to the major third. It takes us from E minor to E major. E minor, E major. Same thing with D minor would look like this in root position. The third is in the middle, so that's the one we move up. In first inversion, the third is on the bottom, so that's the one we move up. And in second inversion, the third is on the top, so that's the one we move up. By the way, I do have a very in-depth guide on inversions and slash chords with all this information and tons more. There's a giant glossary of all the major and minor chords in there. And that's actually part of a chords bundle with two other guides. If you want to learn all about chords properly, these are going to be perfect for you. And there's a link to my website down below where you can check those out. So in the third group, we're going to start with D flat major, E flat major and A flat major because they all look alike, and then we're gonna turn them into minor chords. They're all black, white, black, which I often describe as upside down triangle shapes. You see how A major was kind of like a triangle shape if you connected the notes, where A flat major is the opposite. Kind of like an upside down triangle. The thing to watch out for with this A flat and with this D flat chord is that there's two white notes next to each other in the middle here with no black key in between them. People often get these mixed up when they're playing. So if you play the, the wrong one, it changes it from major to minor. The easiest thing to remember is that for the major chord, you want the note that's further that way. And then for a minor chord, you want the note that's further that way. And it's the same deal with A flat major two. The one to the right is the major third you want for a major chord, and the one to the left is the minor third you want for a minor chord. And we need to be aware of that when we're doing the same thing with inversions too. Now E flat is slightly different because if we play E flat major, a half step below the middle one, we actually do have a black key this time. So E flat minor only has black keys in it. Okay, so if we start with D flat major in first inversion, here's the root position. Put the bottom one on the top. That gives us D flat major first inversion. Now, whilst of course it looks different because we've got a different mixture of black and white keys, and that's what can make this stuff visually confusing when you're a beginner. But if you look, you can still see the shape we talked about on the white keys. So here's a C major first inversion. We've got the fourth and the third. Well, you can still see the fourth here. It's just a black key fourth instead of a white key fourth. It still feels like the same distance between your fingers as well. And then we just have to remember which white key to use on the bottom. It's not gonna be G, that, all, that looks wrong, that looks too squished. This is the one we want, and remember we said out of these two, it's the one over this side for a major chord. We still use the top down method, we find the D flat, and we build the rest of the chord shape underneath. And then we can move our thumb down a half step if we wanna find the minor version of that chord. Major, minor, because the third is on the bottom now. Now we can call this a D flat minor chord. In practice, you're more commonly gonna come across this being named a C sharp minor instead. Either way, it's the same keys on the piano, it looks the same, and we're just focusing on the shapes and the practical side in this video. We're not gonna get into the note spelling at the same time, I've got other videos on that. Now I want you to remember that you need to practice one group at a time for a good reason. Practice the chords in this group once you've nailed the previous two because they're quite different looking. So trying to do them all at once is a surefire way to get yourself mixed up. Let's look at a second inversion. From the first inversion, put the bottom note on the top. Remember, this is the middle around shape. So the D flat, the root, is in the middle. And we've built the shape around it. We've still got that fourth, but it's on the bottom now. And then the third is here. 
So this is the major version, and then if we lower that top note, we've got the minor version. Major, minor. These two look very similar to each other. You've just got to be very careful about which third you use. That's going to look exactly the same on an A flat. Root position, major to minor. First inversion, major to minor. Second inversion, major to minor. The E flat majors look very similar, but the minors, remember, only have black keys. So the first inversion of that, the third's on the bottom as always, lower it, we get all black keys. But now, the cool thing about this is it does look like one of our white key shapes, but just on the black keys. There's an E minor first inversion. If we lower all the notes, flatten all the notes, you get E flat first inversion. They look the same. Here's E flat major second inversion. The third is on top now, lower it. You get E flat minor second inversion which looks like E minor second inversion, but below on the black keys. So the chords in the final group actually do look different from each other. They're the odd ones out, which is why I've grouped them together at the end. But we're still gonna use the same method of learning the major chords and then turning them into minor chords. The chords left in the last group are G flat, B and B flat, and we're going to look at the major and minor versions of each. We're going to start with G flat major. You'll also see this called F sharp major, but we're just going to stick with one name for this video. Now, the thing about this chord is it's only got black keys in it, okay? So if you compare it to a G major, it looks like the same shape, but just on the black keys below. So if that's G flat major in root position, we lower the third in the middle, give us G flat minor, back to G flat major. If we turn that into a first inversion, put the root on the top. Okay, so this is the top down shape. The root is on the top, and I've still got that first inversion shape. I've got my fourth here and my third there. It actually looks like it does on the white keys. You can still see that shape clearly. It's just on black keys instead of white keys. So that's G major. G flat major, flattened all the notes. So if you learn that one first, you can find the minor version by lowering the third, which is now on the bottom. There's G flat minor, back to G flat major, back to G flat minor. Okay, so looking at G flat major second inversion, see we've got our second inversion shape, middle around, the root is in the middle, G flat and then we've got this shape built around it. The fourth here and the third is there. You see, it looks like a G major second inversion, but lowered. Remember the third is on top now, so we just lower that one to give us G flat minor. And as always, practice going back and forth. B and B flat do look a little bit different. So they might need a little bit more work. You might need to spend a bit more time on these ones. So if we look at B major in root position, and we're gonna move that straight up to first inversion. Again, I've just switched the bottom note for the top note. And we've still got our fourth on top and our third here. This just looks a bit different because it's a, a black and white fourth now. But if you compare it to C, well, the fourth here was one, two, three, four, five half steps. And if we go back to the B, it's actually still five half steps. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, we've moved five half steps. It just looks different because it's a black note to a white note. So once you know B major, you can move the third down, which you know is on the bottom, down a half step. You've got B minor as well. And then for second inversion, Put that one on the top, gives you second inversion. Still got our middle around shape. The B is in the middle of the root. Our fourth we just looked at is on the bottom now, and our third is on top. So that's the one you change if you want to change it to B minor. B major, B minor, B major. And finally, we've got B flat major. 
So there's root position. And if I switch that B flat for that B flat, I've got first inversion. And that still gives us our top down shape. We've got the root on top, and then we've got the first inversion shape. It just is a bit harder to see this time because again, we've got a different looking fourth than you've come across. We've got a white note to a black note, but it is still a fourth, it's still five half steps. So if I count from there to there, I've gonna move, I've got to move one, two, three, four, five half steps. And once you've learned that, you know where the third is, lower it down. Now you've got B flat minor as well. You've learned B flat major, but you've gained B flat minor as well. Okay, let's look at B flat major in second inversion. Still a second inversion shape, middle around, roots in the middle. That fourth is here now. It's the lower part and then the, the third is on top. Okay, so the note D, the third, is on top. This is a major chord, so if we lower that, we get B flat minor, B flat major, and B flat minor. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if it was. Next up, you should watch this video, which is for anyone who's struggling to get their hands coordinated together on piano. Over on Patreon, I'm gonna be posting a companion video to this one, looking at diminished chords and augmented chords. There's a link for that below, and if you wanna see more videos like this, then make sure to click subscribe and the notifications bell. Thanks for watching.